Greetings and blessings, dear friends in the Spirit 111. It's Eddie Luisi. How are you? If you notice, I'm growing the beard for Lent. So in 40 days, we're going to see how long and bushy it gets. So today I am calling this talk, Celebrate Your Life. I'd like to read something from Dewdrops, and this was sent to me through Darren Joseph, a friend in the spirit and a Good Morning America buddy. And we have a group called Prayers and Blessings, and he sends us something every week, every day. <laughs> and then I send it out to different people. In difficult times, carry something beautiful in your heart. Love and faith in God, and God will make everything all right. Never lose hope. Trust God. So, dear friends in the spirit, last week I mentioned Terry Kinnear and, uh, and what she's going through um, with her cancer. And I just through my niece, I found out, and my sister, that hospice is coming to our house this morning. So, let's keep Terry and her family in our prayers and send positive thoughts. Um, stay strong, Terry. If you're watching this, we love you. I love you. God bless you. Okay. So last week, Liz, where are you? She's not here. I'm all by myself. <laughs> well, last week, if you saw the video, my wife, Liz Louise, Elizabeth, some know her as Lizzie. We had the little love chair going and uh, the Harry Met Sally uh, two shot. And we chatted about Cue the Spirit. So just want to say thank you. We received several replies and comments. And just want to let you know it is a slow process, but we love your encouragement. So keep us in your prayers so this will happen. Um, two friends of ours who are authors, Michael and Marie Sherlock and Joan Bear. Both of them gave Liz a call, or whatever it was, uh, Skype, FaceTime, and chatted with her and, and gave her some advice and some encouragement in writing. So thank you, Michael, and thank you, Joan. God bless both of you. Um, I am going to read something from Science of Mind, and then I'm gonna share a little bit about the week, which was a really great week. I met a lot of great people and did a lot of great things. So this is called I Am, from Reverend Ike. He has a little um, quote. In fact, I am is the most powerful affirmation you can make. Why? Because every time you say I am, you are announcing the God presence and the God power within. And from Science of Mind, page 69, if you have the book. We arrive at the conclusion that God as spirit is conscious life. This is the inner meaning of the teaching of the I am. So I'm going to read now. The words I am are possibly the two most powerful words we can use. Anything we put behind those words will create our experiences. I am sad. I am happy. I am sick, I am healthy, I am a failure, I am a success. Your word is the power of creation and those words I am, as Reverend Ike states, announce the presence and power of God within you. Recall the story of Moses when he asked God what he should tell the children of Israel and Pharaoh when they asked who sent him. The answer God gives Moses is, I am. Whenever you use the words, I am, you have just taken on the name of the divine. This is why your affirmations are so powerful. You are speaking from the place of your divine self, that place that knows no limits. Be aware of what comes after your I am statements. Like Yahshua, Messiah, Jesus the Christ, we too can say, I am the way, the truth, and the light. Yahshua was not speaking of his personality self. He was speaking of his divine self, which is our divine self. There is only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life, your life, our life now. And so it is. 
and the affirmation or prayer. I am the manifestation of God. I am the love intelligence. I am brilliant, abundant, and creative. God is I am. So this week at Good Morning America, we had several visitors to our set. First of all, we had Wasatch High School, my dear friends from Utah. They've been coming, John Moss and his gang, his wife and, and the students have been coming for 17 years. And John is retiring. So John, and I love you guys. And we are going to still remain friends, friends in the spirit, one, one, one. And we'll, we'll still be seeing each other. Um, there was a student there. Heem, I think was his name. And he shook my hand. We chatted. He took my business card. He's a filmmaker. Still in high school. He sends me, he, 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 I guess last night around 8 o'clock, they were in the airport going back to Utah. And he sends me this wonderful email with a YouTube video. And... The, the message is, all it takes is a simple act of kindness to make a difference. And the video he did, he directed, was called Between the Folds. So, I was in tears. I watched his video yesterday, it was, this morning. It was fabulous. The message was fabulous. The directing, the acting, the production values, the music, everything was fabulous. So, I sent them a really nice, encouraging email. And I asked if I could share the video. So I'm waiting to hear back from him. But if he gives me the thumbs up, I'll be posting his video. It's really wonderful. And any of you friends out there that are in film and video, producers, directors, writers, um, if you could help this kid out. He, he is really, really talented. I mean, it was top notch. Um, all it takes is a simple act of kindness to make a difference. So hopefully, Nicole, if you're watching this, you could put them on your podcast, the Kindness Podcast. Also, another dear friend, Mark, and the Delphian School from Oregon. Mark's been coming to GMA every two years for the past 20 years. Wonderful school, wonderful students, um, great connection. I give a little talk afterwards after they come to the show. And I, I try to inspire, I try to mentor, give a little faith when, when faith is needed. Um, also, I mentioned in many of these talks, Keokuk High School in Iowa. Well, Adam and Beth, who are dear friends, they set up a visit. I'm flying to Iowa at the end of April to give a talk to the kids there. So I'll keep you posted. And they said I could bring one person. So I'm bringing my daughter, Olivia, who's my 19-year-old student who's at uh, Emerson College and studying abroad right now. So I thought it would be a, a cool perspective to have an old timer give you know my life story and 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 some motivational talks and then a 19 year old kid who's in college to help out these high school kids to give them a little hope and motivation to chit chat and then also i was chatting with anna and sherry of the wellness universe and i mentioned them and and their website and i'm part of the wellness universe and we were chatting and they're having a conference i think some type of in Jersey in March and I said hey why don't you bring some of the wellness uh, universe influencers to GMA so we're gonna set up a trip so there's a, a few things that have been happening this week to try to mentor to try to connect with people as we're talking about connecting I'm gonna skip to read from daily practice sacred reading and meditation Oh, and also, One Spirit Learning Center. I had a phone conversation with Judith Adler, who, who works for these guys, and um, we're gonna hook up too. We're gonna do some great stuff. We live in the midst of a new consciousness of life's interrelatedness. And this awareness relates both to life's essential oneness and to life's shared brokenness. Like never before in the history of humanity, we are becoming aware that what we do to a part, we do to the whole. That the parts will not be well as long as the whole is neglected. And the whole will not be well if the parts are neglected. 
Wellness is found not in isolation, but in relationship. John Philip Newell, A New Harmony. That's what we are, friends of the Spirit, right? We do individual things, but we're connected, and there's a relationship between us and how we help each other and all these different schools and ministries that that I have met and, and I try to help out and try to do good things for. Okay, so this I am going to read. It's another science of mine. It's called Celebrate from Victoria Moran. My calling as one imperfect human is to celebrate and uphold life every time I get the chance. And Science of Mind, page 259, I know and feel my freedom. In this freedom, I rejoice. It is time to celebrate your good, which is life. Celebrating your life shows others how to celebrate their lives. Celebrating your life creates a vibration of joy. People cannot help but feel good around you because the joy you feel touches the joy within them. Celebrating your life is a different way of saying thank you to life. Celebration is appreciation. What we appreciate, appreciates. Oh, I like that. <laughs> it grows and expands in beautiful and powerful ways. Your life is to be lived full out. This is why you are here, to be the bold, bright, powerful, and power-filled expression of the one. Isn't this something to celebrate? How good is it to know that your life is filled with all that you need to express your good? Trust that you are the magnificent expression of the divine. This is something to celebrate. Find a way to celebrate you. Celebrate your accomplishments, no matter how small they may seem to be. At the end of the day, or whenever you like, write down what you appreciate about yourself. This is different from a gratitude journal because it has a different energy to it. Again. again, what you appreciate, appreciates. What a blessing it is to be in the world with you. Enjoy your day. So, um, and the affirmation is, I celebrate life. I am guided and directed to experience life's good as my good now. I am appreciative. Pretty cool. So those were two readings from Science of Mind. I'm going to do a couple more readings. Oh, I actually found something else. Because it is the month of Lent. And uh, I feel like the light is kind of changing. So I am going to just do something right over here with the outside. Ah, uh, I, clo I closed the window blind. So maybe we won't have problems anymore. From Neil Donald Walsh, on this day of your life, I believe God wants you to know that the truth lies within you as does all the power you will ever need to change the direction of your life and the course of human history. Wow, can you imagine that? All the power you will ever need to change your life, life and the course of human history. And you may tap that power whenever you wish. Today, if you choose, indeed, you tapped it just now in sending to yourself of this message. Hmm. Dun, 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 dun. So it's very interesting, huh? Things come to you, right? When when you when you kind of have certain feelings and certain thoughts, um, God speaks to us in many different ways. And what we do not only changes the direction of our life, but changes the life of history, right? Hopefully these little videos are, are helping you and, and, and something great comes out of you and that I hopefully inspire, or God inspired, the Holy Spirit inspired, and could change history. Gratitude. We mentioned gratitude today and, and in weeks before. This is from Daily Word, Unity. I give thanks for all blessings, those received and those forthcoming. Gratitude is a powerful spiritual tool. 
tool. When I develop an attitude of gratitude, I proceed as if I have the answer I want, even during those times when the results are not yet visible. I give thanks for a healthy mind and body and take part in activities that support this idea. I am grateful for loving relationships and instinctively act in ways that promote positive communication. I give thanks for abundance, knowing that I am divinely and continuously provided for. I take time each day to reflect on the good things I've experienced, knowing that gratitude produces gratitude. I give thanks for blessings, large and small. I am inspired to look at everything with greater appreciation. And from John 11, verses 41 to 42, Thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me. So like I said, this past Wednesday was Ash Wednesday, and we're in the week, the, the 40 days of Lent. So besides growing my beard, I, I think I showed something about uh, fasting and feasting. I showed a booklet. I might have read something last week. Um, but this is from the Christophers, and it's kind of in the same genre. So I thought I'll end with this. Um, it's called Love, Enjoy, Nurture, Transform. Marion Bach grew up in a family that was committed to giving up something for Lent. But now that she's older, she expanded her approach. Writing on the Loyola's Press website, Bach states, My experience of Lent has gone through a metamorphosis. By now, we have all probably heard the fast from and feast on approach to Lent. Fast from a bad habit and feast on loving one's neighbor more. Fast from eating candy and feast on getting out there and doing volunteer work and so forth. Thinking about Lent this year, this is what she wrote. I hope to express love to those who are hurting and in need in ways that might be challenging for me. I hope to enjoy the gifts God has given me and to see the good that is in the world and my personal life. I hope to nurture the spirit within me and others, listening to the spirit's lead as the days unfold. I hope to be the transforming power of God's love. From Joel chapter 2, verses 12 to 13. Return to me with all your heart, with fasting. Render your hearts and not your clothing. And the little prayer or affirmation, may these 40 days of Lent change me for the better, Holy Spirit. So, dear friends in the Spirit, 111. This talk was called Celebrating Your Life, right? There's so much good in your life. And, and I know this hurt, and I know this suffering. I know, like I said earlier, um, Terry's having hospice come. So God bless you. But always celebrate your life. Celebrate each day. Celebrate your faith, your family, your friends. Try to be positive. You know, it, it, it's, it's rough. And, you know, even though I mention all these good things that are happening in my life, um, still day to day, you know, I have my ups and downs too. So I try to keep a positive attitude. I try to, you know, be there for my family, for my friends. I try to be a professional at my job and to have a certain amount of excellence and to mentor people and to show kindness and love. And when you see good in others, you know, let them know. When, when you see wonderful things, let them know. Um, if I get approval to send a YouTube video from him, I, I will. And it's fabulous. You're really going to love it. So, dear friends of the Spirit, 111, don't forget to share your faith with family and friends. Blessed Lent, whoever is celebrating Lent. And don't forget to cue your spirit. And I'll try to cue my spirit too. Peace and blessings.